Hi, everyone. You were there before. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Psychor Helix Patterns, Anti-Patterns, and Smells, PU. And we're also going to be talking about what's new with Helix. I am uh, Nick Wesselman. I am the product manager for developer experience at Psychor. And I'm Derek Coria. I'm a technical account manager, and I manage the consulting group for North America here at Psychor. So this is going to be kind of a fast and broad presentation that, that will help you get a better understanding of Helix and how to better apply the practices. Um, there's going to be some links in the resources button in your app as well as in a uh, QR code that will be displayed here that will kind of help you go deeper. Um, so that will uh, give you some additional resources uh, for the materials we're talking about today. That said, our agenda is pretty simple. We're going to talk about what's new with Helix and Habitat. Uh, Derek's going to talk about some uh, what we call smells and anti-patterns, so signs you may be misapplying the practices. And then uh, we'll wrap up with some guidance around patterns and tools that can help you apply Helix effectively. So let's start with what's new in Helix and Habitat. We did have a uh, release of what you might call Helix 2.0 on Friday. And with that, I want to emphasize that Helix really is meant to be a collection of uh, conventions formed through our collective experience. So this isn't just Sitecore saying, these are the rules, do, these are the what's and why's, you do it. It's really meant to collect all of our experience and help us all do things better. So that said, uh, for the last year in particular, as I, I, since I've taken on this role, I've really tried to tap into your experiences through our developer experience survey through interviews directly with partners and developers and customers. Um, the Helix channel on Slack has, has uh, had an, uh, uh, some good discussions. And we've also introduced what we call the a re request for comment process with Helix, where we uh, put issues on the Helix Docs GitHub and allow you guys to comment on potential changes to uh, the Helix conventions. So based on preliminary results so far this year, we can see that use of Helix is actually going up. More than 80% of you are using it on some or all of your projects. And much like we saw last year, there's an interesting correlation between your satisfaction, your satisfaction level as a Sitecore developer and the use of Helix, particularly among folks who are newer to the platform. And what this says to me is that in applying Helix, you are spending less of your time worrying about coupling, worrying about depend dependencies and what might break when you change something, and more time adding value for your customers, which, at least for me, gives me a lot more satisfaction as a developer when I'm working on real business value and not on uh, the technical glue. <clears throat> so like I said, we did just release what you might call Helix 2.0. I don't want to give, uh, it's, we are going to be applying semantic versioning, so I'm hoping that 2.0 quickly goes to 3.0, 4.0 and so on uh, as we make more changes uh, and additions to Helix. Uh, there was uh, a lot in here. It was probably the, the biggest update to the Helix docs since they were released. Um, but uh, let's talk about some of the highlights. So first off, in our feedback on Helix, one of the things we heard is that people, or came to understand, is that people aren't really understanding the why of Helix. What is so important about it? What does it do for you? Uh, what are the benefits? <clears throat> so we did revamp the introduction section to the Helix docs, and I'm going to do a bit of a speaking no-no and actually read this to you so I can, and can get your feedback. So Sitecore Helix is a collection of recommended practices and conventions for the solution architecture of Sitecore product implementations. These practices are based on principles of modular architecture, also known as package design, which help you manage the dependencies in your solution in a way that creates more maintainable code. Application of modular architecture will help you decrease the cost of change of your Sitecore solution, reduce technical debt, and provide more long-term value to your customers. And this also gives the community a common terminology for solution architecture, making your implementations more discoverable for current and future developers. So based on those statements, how many feel like you already have a better understanding of the why of Helix? Does this clear up anything for anyone? All right, a few hands, I think. Good. So I'll take it. <clears throat> All right, we'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. So again, the idea, this is now the front page of, or the introduction section of the Helix docs, and it's meant to very quickly tell you this is why we have Helix and what, it, and what benefit it's supposed to bring for you and your customers. On the other side of the documentation, we got a great contribution of a new appendix, which 
uh, kind of relates what you've just read back to the principles of package design that inspired Helix. And so this is meant to kind of bring it all back together to the, again, back to the why, back to the core principles that inspired the conventions. And I, and I just want to note, uh, Dan Solovey, Martin Davis, we're uh, really instrumental in getting this section put together. So a big thanks to them. Um, we really wanted to bring some of that why into the documentation itself rather than sending you out. Yep, a great example of a, a community contribution to, mm -hmm. to the docs. <clears throat> On a more practical side, since Helix was first introduced, we, uh, Sitecore as a product has introduced uh, a lot more uh, um, services and uh, additional products that you might be using with the core content management. So we wanted to give some guidance on uh, folder structure and so on when your code needs to target additional Sitecore services. Mm -hmm. The most significant change here is what was the code directory we now call website. And you see additional uh, directories added for things like commerce and XConnect and identity server. In addition, TDS is now a Sitecore product, and so we wanted to provide more explicit guidance on how to structure your solution uh, when using TDS. The guidance for Unicorn is still there, of course. And again, uh, lots of community uh, input in this section during the RFC process. I know Rob Erlum did a lot with the commerce uh, pieces of this. Uh, Anders Lob contributed quite a bit. We got a lot of feedback in the Slack channel. So again, thank you for everyone that put a comment out there or thumbed up a Proposal. Yep, absolutely. No. On the more, uh, we'll say, controversial side of things, um, we do know that many of you out there are successfully applying Helix using things like naming conventions and FXCOP to create logical boundaries around your solution, around your modules, instead of the sort of physical boundaries of having separate Visual Studio projects. And so there's now a new appendix section in the Helix documentation that discusses this, discusses approaches for doing it, discusses reasons why not to do it, uh, if there, maybe you're solving the wrong problem, and also you know, discusses what the consequences might be. And the whole point is that Helix is not a rule book. If you feel like it's best for the long-term value of your customer that you consolidate your Visual Studio projects and you're still maintaining logical boundaries around your modules, that's okay. Just understand the consequences, particularly to common closure. That is the idea that having the items and uh, C sharp classes and config files in one place for a module does really help maintainability. Um, but again, it's it, it's your prerogative as solution architects to to follow the conventions in the way that's best for your teams and, and customers and requirements. It's expecting more supply, uh, applause or booze on that one. You guys like that? <laughs> kind of surprised. You guys like that? Oh, oh yeah, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of figured. Watch him. <laughs> so uh, along with the, the doc changes, we, have, we now have a new repository of Helix examples as well. And this is long term, this will replace Habitat entirely in the Helix documentation. And the idea is to have more of a collection of examples with varying tool sets and requirements uh, that kind of show you uh, that Helix isn't, it needs to be applied uh, appropriately to a particular set of uh, requirements and can be applied with different tool sets. So the first release of this includes one site called Helix Basic Company, but it's actually implemented three times. Once with TDS, once with Unicorn, and once with TDS with some, some project consolidation. So we have a couple other sites in the backlog that will aim to, again, eventually replace all of Habitat in the Helix docs and with that, you can say, uh, I'll be able to say an adios to uh, Habitat. <laughs> um, may live on as a community project, but we definitely want to get the name Habitat out, uh, disassociated with Helix for now because of the confusion it's creating with Habitat Home. No starter kit? No. no. Okay. <laughs> I think you're going to talk a little bit more about okay. that. <laughs> And we're not done yet. Like I said, we want to keep uh, hearing, bringing in your experience and adding more uh, to Helix, including things like better multi-site guidance, maybe some of the pattern, anti-pattern content you're going to see today, um, and additional content around other site core modules like SXA, JSS, and, and how they relate to Helix. And excited, too, that we now have uh, the site core Helix digital classroom and, and cert, uh, certificate program. How many have taken this? All right, yeah, a few in the room. A few hands. Yeah. Uh, and this is great. You can now get online training for Helix, which for partners fulfills the, the Helix training requirement. 
Um, and uh, we're, in general, we're getting great feedback on this, and I, I want to thank the Site Core learning team for, for uh, a lot of effort in, in making that available. Mm -hmm. So I know you all are really excited about the new Hel the updates to Helix Docs and the Helix examples, and you want to help, right? So uh, we're going to continue the RFC process uh, where you can comment on, based on your experience on, on proposed changes and additions to Helix. Uh, we now have what was the Helix Habitat channel on Slack, which we're now, we've just renamed to just Helix. And if you're an MVP, we are going to be opening up this Helix working group uh, so you can uh, provide more of a, a, a direct uh, contribution as we prioritize changes and so on. If you want to get involved, whether you're an MVP or not, we accept pull requests on both Helix examples and Helix docs. Get in there. If you want to just like fix my spelling for me, I, I know. <laughs> punctuation. Like, yeah, punctuation, that's cool. But, but uh, and if you have larger contributions you want to make, please just uh, grab an issue or request an issue in the backlog and, and issue a pull request. And y'all can keep trolling me with Psychor Helix memes on Twitter. That's cool too. <laughs> and again, uh, another great thanks to our initial people in the, the working group. We, uh, we started this kind of on a lark. Um, to see how it would work out, getting some additional suggestions. So again, that initial group, thank you so much. And uh, it's Mark, Mark that, Cassidy, Liz Branzani, Dan yes. Salovey, and then the folks internally at Psychor, Derek uh, Rob Erlum, and James Herka. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for. <laughs> I, I was afraid I'd leave someone out. So. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So thank you very much.